This is Sport Night Amplified with Angela, powered by SABC Sport. Exclusive to Metro FM. Game over. Right, A M is the same. If, if at the end of the day, and after reasons were given, and after Kes has considered the matter, and we are found to be on the wrong, the appropriate amount of money that will be due to Nakovic will be paid, but not 12 million. But at the same time... So what is the amount that Royal A M thinks is fair? No, no, that will be determined by the contract and tax and all those things. But, but for now, I'm saying that we're disputing the award, even the computation of the award. The, the award on merit and the competition of, of, of the award. And you, you're not at liberty to say what it is that you think is fair? Is it half of 12 million? What, what is fair? If you're saying we're contesting the 12 million is a lot, we're saying we don't know how you arrived at that uh, at that mark. What What is fair? No, no, no. It's not, it's not, it's not what, what will be fair. It's, it's what will be due to him in terms of the contract if we consider the merit. But for now, in terms of the merits, we believe he's not entitled to anything. He's entitled to zero. That will be fair for him. It's exactly 10 after the R6 on the mighty Metro FM. Welcome to it. I am Andy Lengube. And uh, what you've just heard there in uh, the kickoff on Sports Not Amplified with Andy Le, the clip that we play at the beginning of every show to get things started, a conversation we had yesterday with the lawyer representing Royal AM, a friend of the room, really, in La Ruma Tobejano. We're always grateful that he takes our call. But he left the country and all of you in two minds, many saying they're not sure that he sounds convincing in winning the case. And I wonder, La Ruma, Royal AM, if you're unable to convince those that listen, but maybe and perhaps they don't have the legalese and they don't speak legalese as the way that you do, will we be able to convince CAS as well as FIFA? But Royal AM saying they don't feel they owe a cent to Nokovic and they're going to be taking this up and fighting this battle all the way. Welcome to it. It's 11 after the hour 6. It's going to be a different show today. I mean, uh, the banana banana and, and, and thank you so much to to the girls team for trusting us you know all of them and and all those that are handlers of them for trusting us here to carry their story and i hope that we did job enough and that you go there playing knowing that not only us here but south africa by extension because she was you guys came out for banyana banyana unbelievable how the country rallied behind Banyana Banyana. Shows that don't even speak about football were speaking about Banyana Banyana because it stopped being a sporting matter. It became a matter of national importance. It became a matter of gender equality and pay parity as well. We saw people come out of all sorts of uh, crevices to come up and help and uh, heard and, and hear they vo- and have their verse voices heard. I appreciate that. Today is going to be a different story. It's a Throwback Thursday. And you know, on a Throwback Thursday, we like to tell stories. I bumped into a lady uh, walking at Carnival Mall this afternoon. And she said, hey, le para. I turned around and I said, Ay, come on, para, fella, buong so. Got hey, le para, back to her. And she said, Andile, Thursdays, I'm always with you, even if I miss other days, because I love the stories you tell. The stories of humans the humanity stories. And he, and she spoke, uh, um, you know, very proudly of the work that we do here. We appreciate it. Today's no different. He's 32 years old. Many look at that as, you know, the most mature part of their careers. This is when they start to begin to think about a future outside of football. They start planning a future outside of whatever sporting, um, you know, creed that they play. They start looking beyond that and they start thinking, hey, what am I going to do afterwards? But at 32, to have to retire, not because you want to, but because you're forced to, is not something that sits well with most. He said goodbye to the game he loves and he's known his entire life. The reason you and I know the surname, Manyama. He's come out of, inju- out of uh, um, surgery and he's going to talk to us about saying goodbye to the game. What brought about this decision? How bad was his injury that seeing him not be able to play again? 17 after the R6, it's Throwback Thursday, your favorite show of the week on the mighty Metro FM. Uh, I mean, do you remember? Just a couple of, uh, was it, what, a week and a half, two weeks ago, we told you an emotional story of Roland Garros winner Donald Rampadi, still one of the most amazing stories um, I've ever heard. Last week, we look back at the history of Kaiser Chiefs coach Malif Nzeki and we spoke to Clinton Larson who had worked with him back back in the day when they were both at Bloomington Celtic and we told you about their come up together and the expertise 
uh, that uh, he and of course uh, by large his experience empowered unto Mule Finseke. Tonight we continue with Throwback Thursday and story tonight is uh, an emotional one because it's one of goodbye but we're going to choose on this year's show to relive the amazing moments and the time spent with us, the time given to us, the talent shared with us of one Lebohang Manyama, former Kaiser Chiefs and Bafana Bafana midfielder, Cape Town City player as well. You can add that into there. Born 13 September 1990, only 32 years. Yase Tim Bisa started his professional career out at IX Cape Town before joining Supersport United and loaned to Bumalanga Black Aces. Joined Cape Town City where he enjoyed his football and was captain of the team and also won his big personal accolades there before moving on to you know overseas and then later on Kaiser Chiefs as well. Lebo joins us now on the line. Lebo, thank you so much for talking to us and welcome to the show. Uh, Andy Le, uh, good evening to you, good evening to all the listeners, and good evening to everybody at the station. Uh, thanks for having me. Uh, sorry, I couldn't take your call uh, last week, or I don't know when, but I remember they said you asked for me, and I was still in the middle of making this decision, and my head wasn't right. And yeah, my apologies, I couldn't come through back then. I need to apologize to you, Label, because the first time we're talking to you here is when you're saying goodbye. I mean, we've only been on air for, you know, just over a year, but still, the first time we're talking to you... You never know, Angela. It might be the beginning of something. You never know. I mean, you're a very well-spoken gentleman, so I wouldn't be surprised. Here's one thing I learned today. And then this is we the we were in Oh, and the What him be, sir? Yeah. What him be, sir? No, I'm Zenda from Zenda. My dad is Zenda, my mom is Tutu. So that's why I live and a bit of a confusion there. Oh, and then you grew up in Tembisa, though? Uh, I was born in Tembisa because my mom is from there, but I grew up in Alex. So my parents lived in Alex. Uh, we moved there when I was about uh, four or five. So, so the East End is home, like, basically. I sit in Ah, uh, not really. Uh, it's my best place, but it's not really home. For me, home, I think, is Alex. Everything about me is <laughs> Alex. Oh, we are, we are speaking. <laughs> you tell you, George. Right you tell you, George. You go to your speaking yeah. to visa, no? No, George knows. You know, and uh, also, you know, uh, talking about George, uh, he just not into to him and his family. Mm. Uh, his mm. but, uh, he, lost his, he lost his sister the day before yesterday. Yeah. So I'm a condolence to him. Very good friend of mine. I'm very close with his family. I always spoke to his sister this morning, you know, uh, it's tough. Unfortunately, yeah, I'm also struggling a bit, but I'll probably go see them just before the funeral on the weekend. Yeah, no, yeah. I'm there tomorrow as yeah, well. Uh, to the entire family, Amadulega, of course, uh, we do say uh, that our condolences uh, for the loss of George Madulega's sister there. But, I mean, when you say last week when we wanted to have a conversation with you, you're in the middle of making this decision. Talk to me through what even got you there and how that process was labeled. Uh, and it was a very long, uh, uh, exhausting in all sorts of ways, you know, uh, spiritually, mentally, uh, physically, obviously, uh, emotionally, you know, uh, I had to look, I had to, to, to widen my vision and see a bigger picture of everything, else, everything that was around me, you know, uh, obviously, including my career, uh, the family also, you know, involved. And also there's the future involved, you know. Uh, look, football is a, what, a 15 to 20 years career. After that, there's still life after that, you know. So I also had to think about that, you know. So it was quite a difficult one, to be quite honest, Angela. And it is not nice. I can tell you that even now I'm not okay. Uh, I cry sometimes on my own watching, uh, obviously, all the, the clips that I was involved in. I was luckily blessed to be involved in throughout my career and all the wonderful moments when you look back it, it's kind of overwhelming but yeah it's, it's a grateful one uh the response from the country uh from my former colleagues uh opponents people that i didn't even play with you know uh made it a bit easier but yeah i mean it, it will take time for me to get used to this because i mean my whole life has always been about working up and going to play football now I can't, but yeah, I mean, life for me is, is an endless journey and you just never stop traveling, you know. I think probably, like, many people have said, it's the end of one chapter and probably the beginning of another one. 
Lebu, for, for just context's sake, you had to make a difficult decision. You're 32 years old. You still had a lot of football in you. Why is Lebo retiring from football? Uh, no, it's quite simple, uh, and Angela. Uh, I like to play the game uh, to my full capacity. I, I want to be fully physical. I want to phys- be physically fit. First, uh, firstly, I want to be that. And secondly, there were a lot of factors in this decision. You know, like I said, uh, I thought of coming back. There was a chance for me to come back, but uh, to come back at at, at 60 or 70 percent physically and what the game is right now and also to be quite honest you know uh, I've always been an, an, an honest uh, performer you know I play my heart out you could even see in some of the games the emotions take me because I hate to lose uh, that's just the person that I am and I thought to myself you know there's millions and millions of people that I haven't really uh done anything wrong by, you know, in terms of my career. And to come back at 60-70%, they don't know that I'm, I could come back at 60-70%. and 70%. Everybody would have expected me to play at the level that they know. And I, I think it would have been difficult and also unfair to people that use their money to come watch and stuff, you know. So I thought of it, like, really, really hard. And I, I wasn't going to accept coming back uh, at 70% physical capacity. But also, you know, there were talks of if I continue to play at that 60 or 70 percent, chances are in two years' time or three years' time, which is what the age of 34, 35, I might need a knee replacement. <laughs> so, hmm. so you think of things like that, then uh, I might be, uh, the arthritis in my knee might grow. Uh, the cartilage that is left might be completely gone by then. It's already uh, half, I would say 50 percent of it is not there right now, you know. So the cartilage uh, so, I mean, on, yeah, in your knee, yeah, is that's the injury? In my knee. The, the injury is the ACL. So the ACL messed up everything, you know. I think you saw in my mm. message, I said misdiagnosed. So I, I had an ACL for the longest time, and I was treating, we were treating, we thought it was an MCL, and then we thought it was a meniscus, and then we thought it was two meniscus torn, not knowing that it was... Uh, an ACL that was just messing up everything and causing a lot of a lot of problems. I I actually had to now get a new nerve. You know, luckily they were they were busy with a new nerve. You know, doctors never stop searching, and they had to put that nerve in my knee just so I can be able to walk every day. Because I need to be quite honest, even walking like after a proper proper heart session was impossible for me. You know, it was very very sore, and so I thought of it and I thought, now nah, I wasn't gonna make it. No, rather. Before usually we do what we evaluate before we march. Mm. <laughs> but Lebu, I, yeah, I then I wonder thought, thought because of, yeah. if you're getting misdiagnosed, misdiagnosed, how long has that been going on? Does this mean we've been watching you play with an injury? Uh, to be quite honest, Angela, I played uh, 2021. Uh, I think when we were playing in the CAF, so I got injured in the CAF against Simba in Tanzania. Mm. I remember the game when we lost 3-0 and won the tie 4-3 because we had won 4-0 a week earlier. Uh, I got injured in that game, and there were two games left, if I can recall. It was uh, TS Galaxy and Golden Arrows. I remember we played Golden Arrows first. The game was called a hat-trick. Uh, if you check that game and you check the pictures, my knee was already wrapped up during those games. You know, my left knee, because I already felt the pain from the... The, the previous game, you know. So obviously we tried all the painkillers uh, and I continued playing. And then I played also the game against TS Galaxy, which was the last game of the season, to secure the top eight. And then after that, that's when my knee completely said, nah, not, we cannot do this anymore, you know. Uh, obviously we go for the necessary scans and stuff and came back to the same. I had an MCL tear. So I had had an MCL tear before, you know. And so I knew the dynamics of, of the recovery and the rehab and the time needed for it to heal in terms of what must be done, you know. But it wasn't responding from then and you know, up until today. And um, I was never 100%. Every time you saw me play, I was playing with pain. Wow, Lebo. So we're sitting in the stands, we're sitting at home, and we're saying, get rid of this label. What's he doing on the field? We're saying all of these things. Meanwhile, 
you on the field losing cartilage every day on your knee, playing with an injury that's wrapped up high on different painkillers uh, and all sorts of, I can imagine, uh, things that are in your body because you're trying to give the best you can. Yeah, look, I, mean, uh, I think each and every footballer would have probably taken the same decision as I was. You don't want to see yourself not playing because to miss one or two games is, is a bit difficult also, you know. And also, when you're at a club like Kings of Chiefs, to be quite honest, the competition is very high. You don't want to miss games, you know, and you don't want to miss important games, to be quite honest, you know. So you you always want to be there, you always want to be there. You sometimes go through the pain barrier and just go with it, not knowing... Hmm. But, you know, uh, in about a year or so, this could come back and haunt you, or in about six months. And I went ahead and played, played up until I played my last game. I remember my last game was the, was the Derby against Pirates in Orlando. I think we won 2-1. When Coach Stewart was still there. Mm. And I think that was my last game. After that, I completely broke down again. Uh, it was towards the end of the season. Obviously, my contract was finishing also. And then we went and we, we tried rehab it, but it wasn't working. And then I had to go for a second surgery. Uh, luckily, even though I wasn't achieved, you know, I've always kept uh, thought of having my own medical aid in case there were days where I wouldn't have a club or I wouldn't be employed somewhere, you know. And I had that, and that covered that and helped me. And I had that second surgery. Again, I think it was a wrong surgery, you know, it was by the look of things, you know, and... We no, Liv, what do you we mean? Uh, we continued the same the same uh, rehab, uh, obviously in conversation with, uh, with John, with uh, Coach Eric, uh, the season in Cape Town. Uh, obviously, uh, some of the doctors that I know in Joburg uh, were helping me, uh, the pilots that I know, just to get fit so I can go to Cape Town. Because Cape Town was a done deal, to be quite honest. I was going there just to prove my fitness and then I joined the team, you know, which was never a problem because if you can recall, in 2015, I went to Cape Town after a seven months uh, layoff. I got there with an injury also, you know. So we had been there before with John, with Coach Eric. So we thought maybe uh, round two will sort this out, you know. Uh, then I continued training in Cape Town. Still, obviously, with a lot of pain because uh, I could train with the team sometimes, complete sessions. But then I'd have to rest for a day or two, and you know. So I thought, I don't know what is happening, but I kept on trying, trying, trying. And then just before the World Cup, I uh, played in a friendly game against Stellenbosch. Uh, we must have probably maybe saw it in, in social media somewhere mm. that I played, you know. And and after that game, I broke up again, you know, like just broke down. Uh, my knee swelled up uh, to a point where I couldn't. Like walk from from wherever you are right now and to the door was difficult for me, you hmm. know. And now it's the World Cup, uh, and obviously my girlfriend is, is like six or seven months pregnant by then. She's in Georgia, she's alone. I asked John and I asked Coach Eric nicely, uh, "This is what's happening. Uh, can I go do search, uh, like look for the, for solutions to this knee in Georgia?" Because also I left my girlfriend alone and we're expecting and it's our first baby. She's a bit not relaxed, you know, as she would be when I'm around, mm. you know. So, can I go do this in Joburg? Uh, and then I'll do the necessary things. I know everything that I must do. I know the right people to call. Uh, there were a lot of people that were open to help me. Uh, Mr. Sifali, the physio at Supersport, because I worked with him before. There was Dylan Cox, who was at Bio at Kukune. There were different people. Uh, Bongs, the nephew from Amazulu, offered help. Uh, there's a guy called Pinas. He was a fitness trainer for the MDC at Chiefs, and he was with us in the first team with Coach Ernst. He left Chiefs, and he called me, and he said, come, I'll try to help you. There was a lot of people that were trying to help me, and I'm very grateful to them. Uh, but we just couldn't get it right, you know. Uh, we just couldn't get it right. And then we went for that scan. And now that's when the reality started to sink in, around about November, before the World Cup. Uh, I have my third surgery then. And then I I asked the doctor for an honest opinion, and he's like, you'll be lucky to come back from this, you know. But obviously, Andy Lewis, with my love for the game, I think to myself, I'm going to finally, I'm going to, at the end of the day, I'm going to win this no matter what, you know. Because that's what you tell yourself, that I, I'm never going to stop until I win. 
Uh, then we continue, and I continue with the rehab, go on and on, and obviously the season finishes, and I'm still in contact with John, uh, with uh, Coach Eric, with uh, the guys in Cape Town. I'm even part of the group chat of the team, so I'm, I know everything that is happening from when preseason is starting, the program and stuff, you know. But now it's, it's honestly time for me to make a decision, you know. So I decide, uh, let me go for the last game, and I call... Uh, Dr. Budanya, who's a good friend of mine, is a Dr. Cheese, and I ask him to kind of help me out with the scans and stuff, you know. And I go and do the scans on my own, uh, a pro scan in Rwanda, in, in the Rose, I think, or Rose Bank. Uh, I do that, and then I get three just and I get three opinions, you know. Uh, two of the doctors uh, see the same MCL and the same meniscus tears, you know. They think it's that, and the cartilage gone. They see all the things that have been seen before. But this third guy now tells me, no, man, your ACL looks like it's been wearing out from the first surgery you did. You were supposed to do an ACL surgery, not the meniscus and your thing. All these things are messed up because your ACL wasn't okay. So every time you kept on pushing, uh, raising the training intensity, you're actually messing up your ACL, but actually strengthening the other places. But without an ACL, you cannot do anything, you know? Hmm. And, yeah, that was just it. And yeah, I know it's a long story, but, yeah, I mean, uh, that was just it. And, and then from there on, obviously, uh, you have to sit down with your family and you have to think about all these things, knee replacements, arthritis growing in your knee. Uh, Imagine, at 32, you're yeah, talking about arthritis. Yeah, to not having to to be able to walk properly, most probably for the rest of my life. Uh, I've got a little boy that, that will probably want to play football one day. What did you name him? You think about the thing. His name is Ndebo. Ndebo. It means, yeah, it means Ndebo. Yeah. Yeah. Listen, so, Lebo. Uh, I mean, and I hear how you arrived at this decision, and it's been a tough one, but... When you think back, and you say, and you 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 know, you you switch on the TV and you see moments. When you think back to your career, when you think back all the way to where it started, you know, I escaped town in 2010, I think it was back then. What's what, what's going to stick out for you? Because for me, I think that season in, at Cape Town was was amazing, Cape Town City. But also, I think about that season achieved, the 2019 one, that that almost season. Yeah. I mean, I'm going to remember that. And I think about going all the way to the finals. I'm going to think about that. When you look back, and maybe even Turkey for you, you know, when you look back to your career, what are some of the things that you think of? Uh, above all, Andy, to be quite honest, you know, uh, when I started this, the aim was to touch people's lives, you know, and and to try to change lives, you know, obviously with things that we do off the field. And that's what football gave me. Uh, the, the football gave me the, not the power, but I think it gave me a chance to do things like that, to change lives, to help out, to help other people, to help in the townships in Alex, to help in Tembisa. I've got a lot of friends that do a lot of things in Tembisa also. To help uh, in Venda, you know, where my granny is still living with the tournament there in December. That's what football has done for me. Above uh, never mind everything that I've achieved. I mean, for me, what what warms my heart a lot is that a lot of people are not talking about all the football or all the good football that I played, or great, or excellent, or whatever way they rate it, you know. But it's it's, it's mostly about being a good person before you being a good footballer, and that's what I would take out of this. Uh, a lot of relationships made, a lot of friendships made, lifelong brothers that I have that are still playing, you know. Uh, uh, and obviously, what I did on the field, you know, uh, it's only now that I realize that uh, I actually played my heart out, you know. Uh, uh, when you're doing something, you don't really see it until you stop and then mm. you reflect. And now you see and you're like, you know what, uh, all I can take out of this is, is gratitude. I was really, really blessed to be a professional for for uh, 11 or 12 seasons, uh, one abroad. But, uh, I mean, for that, it's... A, a lot of people don't even get to three or four, you know. Mm. A lot of people wish for for that longevity, you know. But I was there, and I tried to perform at my best, and and always took in everything that came with it, and you know, from the praises, from all the the noise I'll get, uh, not noise as such, but cheers and stuff, 
And also the criticism, I need. I, I, I love the criticism a lot because I, I always believe nobody will criticize you, Andy, if you haven't done something that they've seen before. Mm. You know? And for me, I knew that people criticize me simply because they knew the standard of football or the level of football that I played. You know, And whenever I didn't do that and the team loses, it was kind of obviously it comes back to players that can make a difference. And I was kind of that player that liked to make a difference, but not only for myself, but for my teammates. I was more on making my teammates much better. You ask the young boy the cheese, you ask the young boy the Cape Town City, you ask your, your Aubrey Mudiba, your Tao Nodada, your Keegan Dolly that came as kids when I was in the first team at, at whatever club I was in. You know, you ask them how I was with them. You know, I, I've always believe in that we need to help each other and make each other better and that was just me you know a, a, a selfless footballer but more importantly a selfless person you know what there are people that recognize that um, I've got somebody that wants to say something to you Lebo um, I know you're going to recognize <laughs> the voice have a listen to this Lebo Manyama I'm saddened by the news that you have finally hung up your boots but I understand like everyone else that this day always comes for footballers and whilst it's a sad day I'm a hundred percent sure that you have still a lot to give to this game I can tell you from the day we met when you were 19 and I took you from the SAB team after the 35 goals it was probably the highest that we've ever paid for an amateur player still up till today but it was worth every cent. You've turned out to be arguably the best prodigy of my career as an administrator in finding players, developing players and placing players. Your career speaks for itself. I don't need to repeat that. But all I can say is that you grew from a young boy, and I saw this in front of me, to the man you are today. And there's no doubt in my mind that our relationship has transcended football. I see you as a son, I see you as a person that I care about, you, your family, and the people around you. I see how you've affected the entire nation with what you've produced on the football pitch. And I'm 100% sure that your career is only starting now off the pitch. So I look forward to crossing roads with you again. I'm sure that's definitely going to happen. And I can tell you now, my boy, you were the best. Mm. <laughs> uh, Lila. Yeah, that's a big boss. Uh, the John Community. Yeah. Jeez, uh, what a message. Yeah, Lila. Uh, no, what a man, uh, to be quite honest. You know, uh, what a man. Uh, yeah, we had our fight, you know. Obviously, it happens when you have relationships, but you have to fight, you know. It's just a relationship like mine and his, you know, but but uh, above all, you know, me and him have always, uh, you know, he's the one person that taught me that when you want to do something and you put your heart into it, it, it the impossible is nothing. Uh, that man has made me believe in so many things, including football, that I never thought I'd believe in. He made me believe in myself more than anybody else, you know. I, like he says, you know, he took me in as a boy, uh, you must remember that Ajax was a development team, and it development it developed a lot of players. And for him to take a player at my age, when he had hundreds and hundreds of them at the at the Igamba, you know, uh, means something. That means he saw something in me, and I will always be appreciative. Uh, I always remember him as a person that gave me the opportunity at 19 years. He was part of my move to football sport. Mm -hmm. uh, he took me there from Aces. Uh, uh, he showed me a dream, which, to be quite honest, uh, took a lot of convincing because I didn't know how we were going to make it with 14 players in Cape Town, you know. But he flew down from from Cape Town to Joburg and came and fetched me from my house and said, I want to speak with you. This is my dream. I want to build this team and I want to build this team around you, you know. And to be quite honest, at that time, I didn't think Cape Town City would be what it was, but when we landed in Cape Town, I knew already that this was going to be a success. It's all about what the boss was doing and what he was saying and what he stands for, you know. So for me, he knows how I feel about him. He was the first person I told about this. Well, one of the first people that I told 
that I'm going to hang up my boots. And he replied very nicely. And you can even see, you know, the acknowledgement from the club, uh, just how it means, uh, or how how, how we, we mean to each other, you know, uh, in terms of me and the club. And everybody that's there, you know, there's people there. Uh, and, and obviously, we, we are going to cross paths because, Obviously, I, I have to give back to him everything that he's done for me. I have one more. I have one more. Have a listen to this. You'll know who this is as well. <laughs> uh, hi, Manyama. Uh, Mr. Mudaung here, Bob Steak. Just want to wish you well in your early retirement and uh, want to thank you for your contribution in South African football and also for Kaiser Chiefs because you were a true professional during your time here. We never had issues, but uh, I admired your level of you know, enjoyment and passion for the game and your talent. And I think you retired at the right club. Um, it's God's will for your retirement. You serve football to the fullest. I think uh, with God's timing, uh, you had to retire, you had to be forced to retire. But I think you serve football with integrity and you served the Kazakhstan brand with, with loyalty and respect. Unfortunately, what it is is what it is now with forced retirement. But I think you must have planned for your future. And uh, we contributed immensely as Kaiser Chiefs to your career. And uh, I want to thank you. Definitely thank you and wish you all the best. And with God's blessings, I think you are a gentleman of note. You are a professional. You will always deal with life with integrity. And God bless you, my brother. <laughs> Bob Stick. Oh, uh, uh, yeah, another man. Eh? Um, uh, yeah. And now you're going to make me look like I was a boss's fan all the time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but hold on. Before you even go uh, to Pop Steak and Chiefs, you know, there's something, and you know, an hour's never going to be enough. There's something I learned about you um, a long time ago, and it came through now when we started speaking, is that you're a family man through and through. And that's why when your girlfriend got pregnant, you couldn't stand to be away from her. But that's why at the beginning of the conversation was so important for you to tell us about your lineage, about, you know, dad and mom. And I heard that the one person that's closest to you now, that is your rock, is your brother. Utabis. Yeah. Uh, well, I've got two brothers. It's Tabis or no, no Pasek. So uh, I'm, the, I'm the last boy, you know. And, and yeah, they've been with me through and through. Uh, even... Uh, I, I had a difficult time as a teenager, you know, to be quite honest. Uh, Angela, growing up in the country, so I was involved in a, you know, a lot of bad things. And my brothers, you know, my brothers stood for me at that time, you know. And when I look back now to where I am, uh, I always look back with the thought that, you know, they saved my life, you know, because I was, I was honestly out of order uh, when I was a teenager, very, very naughty. I would have ended very badly, you know, but, you know, with, with my brother's support, more especially Otaviso, because Otaviso, what, what Andy, what people don't know, they know he's my brother, but Otaviso was, is the most talented one in the family, actually. Hmm. And he's, he's actually the reason I loved football so much, because I used to go watch him when I was younger, you know. So, so I fell in love with football, watching my older brother play, and he was my biggest inspiration in football. I'll tell you what, Lemo. I'm sorry to stop you there, but I think it's it's only right that um, it's only right that uh, Tabiso hears this himself. We're gonna get Tabiso on and you know speak to to Tabiso because he also tells me about how the three of you um, had to go on after you know a, a very heartbreaking time that you had to pull yourself together. You know, because of things that happened within the family, the loss of people within the family. And, uh, you know, he wants to let it be known how proud of you he is as well. Let's see if we can get Tabiso back on the line. Do we have him? Tabiso. Hey, Tabiso. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And you know, I was you know, you've got Bobby Mutawung telling him how amazing he was and how great his career was. You've got, you know, um uh, down the you know, the big boss out in uh, in Cape Town saying the same John to say, Hey, you were amazing. But I know Tabi so that you wanna use this opportunity to tell him in front of the whole country and the world that's listening right now how proud you are of your brother. Yeah, thank you, uh for inviting me. Uh all I can say, uh, he knows I'm part of him, and he knows I celebrated when he started 
thing in PSL. And then uh, obviously I'm here for him. I was here for him every day, every day until now he retired. I'm celebrating his retirement, not crying for anything. I'm celebrating his retirement as I was <laughs> celebrating when he started his career. Lebo. And I'm still gonna be there. To see. No, sorry, sorry, Tabi, to carry on. Yeah, I'm still gonna be there with him to recover what he knows. I'm the big brother, I can't go anywhere. You've had so many people speak so proudly of you, speaking to how you were raised and the ethics that you were raised with. And that's why Bobby says you are never problematic. That's why John says you are an amazing professional. Your parents, Lebo, how do you think they look down? Do you think they smile? Do you think they look up at you? Do you think they look at you every day and they say, look at my son? Do you think you've represented your family well? <laughs> oh, I hope they do. <laughs> uh, yeah, and uh uh, obviously, I sent this message also to my family. But firstly, uh, about my brother, you know, uh, he he's right. You know, uh, you know, uh, there's there's been through the wars with me. Like I was saying before, you know, uh, he also knows how I feel about him. You know, uh, obviously, we've had to carry on uh, the three of us, but not the three of us as such, because obviously we have uh, extension, uh, yeah, uncles and cousins, yeah. But also, you know, we we lost our parents. Uh, 2011, 2012, you know, in a space of 12 months. Uh, I was at IX when we lost uh, both our parents. And, and yeah, I mean, we've, it's just been not only us as such, but, yeah, he's right that the three of us have had to carry each other uh, for all this time, and we're still going to carry each other. And and obviously, during my career, uh, there was up and down, so I never really got to spend time with them, although obviously of traveling and stuff. And then and when you get to end of the season, sometimes you have to go to the national team you never really get time to, to do certain things with family, but also you try as much as possible to protect your family from uh, the world that I was facing, you know, with all, you know, what I was saying, the criticism, the cheers. You also want to protect your family from that, you know, and, and I tried to do that, but obviously my foot, my brother is is quite uh, a good footballer. He's familiar with a lot of footballers because he played the game himself, you know. But, yeah, yeah. Uh, Going back to your question, uh, I, I'm I'm happy I'm not there because it was gonna get too emotional for me. But yeah, I mean, uh, I, I look back with gratitude, and I don't have much to say now, you know, because this is just it just gets better every day. You know, every day I I, I I I've had an interview every day, and it's just getting, you know, uh, I'm starting to see or. Oh, or like feel how people felt about me, and for me, it, it comes with a lot of pride, you know. Uh, and I'll forever be grateful, man. Uh, Tabi, so I know you know. Just two weeks ago, I think you were doing a tombstone for your parents, um, and you represented them so well. They are very proud, Lebo. I'm very sure of that. But Tabi, so looking forward now, where 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 do you see Lebo? What do you see him doing? Where do you see his career going? Do you see where do you, what avenues do you see him going into? Uh, <clears throat> whatever he's gonna uh, do, that, we have to be there for you, guiding him, sharing whatever he's gonna start. Oh, Tabisa's line is uh, not great there, Lebo. What's next for you? Yeah, uh, there's load shading, I think, in the, in the wood. Ah, good load shading. Yeah, and I'm going to say, I'm going to say, hey, network, I'm going to say, load shading. What's next for you? Uh, what's next for me, Angela? Uh, like, what is the immediate plan? I can imagine it's to recover from your injury. But what is what is Lebo set up uh, during his career, in his life, that can now be his new life do you what is the immediate thing you're going to do what is the long-term thing that you're going to do with your life i mean this is what you've done for the last almost like you said so many years of your life because it's not just your professional years even before that when you're trying to get to the professional levels this is what you're dedicating yourself to what now uh, and, uh a lot of things for me a lot of things uh, firstly firstly a lot and lot lots and lots and lots of time uh, with my son, my girlfriend, uh, obviously that is very, very important because uh, 
you know, also, you know, when sometimes I look at this and I look at how my career ended, and then there's the death of my son. And that's why I say it matters. It might be the beginning of something, you know, mm. uh, when something goes, another chapter that opens. So I'm, I'm looking to enjoy that. Uh, it's my first time being a parent, you know, so I'm looking to enjoy that fully. And and to be quite honest, uh, it was up until about a month back that I thought, you know, uh, this coaching thing is actually very, very interesting, you know. Uh, oh, wow. I could actually do it. Yeah, I could actually do it. So for the past month, I've had boys that we trained with. Uh, so during off-season, what we did, me and the rest of the uh, pro, pros from Alex, so Yompo Magola, Lebo uh Piri, some are not even from Alex. Bongani Zoom joins us time and again. Is that we take those, those boys from Alex that, that train, that are looking for clubs, you know, that are looking to further their careers. And we, we used to train with them every off-season, you know, just to create that vibe for them and have them be with us in the same space and play a friendly games. So for the past month I've had that, I've been facilitating that. Uh, I'm enjoying it. Uh, you know, the boys are responding very well. And I think for me it, it, it is the next step, you know, because I've, I've had relationships with, with the younger boys and the teams that I've been. You can ask your happy Mashiani, your Mshini, your Jabulo Blom, who was my roommate during his time in the first team. Uh, see, I, you know, uh, from Cape Town City, I, I got Nadada. When I met Nadada, he was a young boy, still at UJ. Mudiba was young when I met him. I met him. Uh, see, I mean, you know, I've always been good with, with the up and coming kids, but I never really thought of coaching, you know. But I think I, I will try that because I feel like the amount of knowledge that I have in terms of football and how I see football, you know, uh, could help a lot of youngsters, but also I think also. It's high time that, you know, if you are an ex-pro, you should be involved in football. Because, I mean, you look at everywhere in the world, the ex-pros are now getting more involved and the football is actually mm-hmm. getting much better. Not to take anything wrong from people that are studying it. There's people that have studied it and are doing actually very well, you know. But also to have a perspective of a person that's been on the field, that's played in the biggest games in the country, it helps a bit, you know, with the kids. Because you've been there and you understand certain situations on the field, you know, so that interests me a bit. But for now, obviously, like you said, uh, to recover from the injury, spend more time with my family, spend more time with my brothers, you know, uh, and their kids. Uh, yeah, and just take it one day at a time. Uh, but I will surely not be lost to football because, to be quite honest, I, I, I can't. You know, every day I try to get away from it, but it follows me. You know, there's kids that I meet in LX because I spend a lot of time in LX. Uh, that will tell me, you never just get away from it, Andy, you know. So I am looking to, to that and possibly, you know, getting a club of my own, which is a big process, but it's a dream that I have, more especially for kids in LX, you know. I think about that, I think about the future of football in LX. It has gone down over the years, you know. Uh, I mean, after our generation, we film Paul Magola's, you with your Patrick Tumwayos, you know, after that, after us, if you look, it's the only level period that's really, really, really gone to the highest, highest level, you know, and that's a small, for me, having one player out of so many, that means the problem is there's a problem somewhere, you know, and I'll try to get into that and try to help the youngsters be better versions of themselves, you know, and yeah, that's that's what, that's my thinking at the moment, I mean. Have a listen to this because there's so many of them, but, you know, we took so much time talking to you because this moment was about you. Uh, but have a listen to some of the voice notes that we've gotten from people that would love for you to know. Ex-Andile, Andile, Jimmy Mago, the busy con of Motsebe, my brother. Le para la, le para la, le para, le para. Me para kupelo vuze le buha manyama, horre marata tata. And we still respect the guy so much. He's a living legend, the eh, ma Kupelo moza atom pezaga, abe chelete, arake di property, a investe. Jimmy mago de bizu kono fumaze be dangi ma. Hey financial advisor fandak Jimmy, thank you. Andy Lebon, Peter Mujem from Timbisa ne. Ah bro, kamu di mago kele chama thazele matlo no no. Ah uchirile chaka metala majaji. Ene ki ki wisha or metro FM le mingwa re mingwe. Uh, 
atlise motho o mongwe o mo shapo o tshwana le wena o ile goreng ke bana wa nkoba le ba le ditalent tsa mo mozantsi and then lebza as for wena bro ka tsa re king wa ya buti eh take it easy modimo wa tseba ro wetsang wa tseba ro dira modimo eh monyako o mo ha o tswalega o mo wa bulega there's a purpose bro ka pianong eh rapela modimo to fast strength and then modimo to go bontsha gore nyo wa this life after football peter mutiem from tembisa thank you I and I would like to say so and to, to Manyama, you've been a great guy, even though I'm a Pakania by say you to give us a very oh, sir, example. Your show is your your intellectual <laughs> proof. You've been a good player. I understand the situation right now. You can't find Ah, it. no, play the next so one. We can't hear it, man. Yeah, we can't hear that one, my brother. Good evening, Andy Le, Timmy T, Miranda, uh, behind the scene there. Um, Brian Makuya, calling from Amakuya. I wanted to ask man this question to Lebo. I'm, I'm sure it's, too, it's still too early for him to uh, do the uh, coaching courses, but I think... Um, uh, it it is possible for him to go and uh, start working as an assistant because I think he's, he can play a very good role. Uh, his life uh, in football uh, can motivate a lot. He can motivate a, a lot of youngsters. Uh, I think he should start uh, as soon as possible. Maybe trying to to be an assistant somewhere. Then the rest will will follow. Thanks a lot for your. Uh, for watching you actually playing football, uh, Lebo. Thanks a lot. Thank you very much, Lebo. We appreciate you. Thank you so much for taking your time to be with us here. Um, you know, this was about what got us here, but there's still opportunity for us to to have conversations about, uh, you know, your, 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 your illustrious career. And I hope that those that were listening, they can hear that you're a man that knows a football who speaks well. And maybe some would love to hear you speak about football on the telly, on the radio, I hope somebody picks that up. Oh, thank you. Thanks for having me, man. And uh, I mean, continue also doing that. a great job that you're doing. I listen to your show a lot, and it's helped a lot of people. And I think that's that's just about it, you know, helping out uh, wherever you can. And and if you got the means to help, uh, why not, you know? And yeah, thank you, thank you to, to the whole of South Africa. I think, uh, man... I didn't think I'd, I'd get such a response, but you know, I'm overwhelmed. Uh, my family appreciates it, and and it goes on to show uh, what I've done, you know, and in, in, in the football industry, and and now more than ever, you know, I think uh, I will not be lost to football. Hearing everybody speak uh, so well about me and how I see football, you know, uh, for me, it's it's going to be impossible to not share it with the next generation, you know. And I heard the guy say uh, to get somebody who's going to be the next Lebo Khang Manyama. I, I think that is important. Uh, I've, I've read my race. I've, I have my story. Uh, my son will see what I was during my time when he grows up, and I'm proud of that, and I'm proud of what he's going to see. Uh, but I want to help somebody be better than me, and you know, that's my true goal, and I think for me that's the next objective, to get somebody who's going to be way better than me in Alex. Uh, if I'm the only player from Alex to have won the player of the season, I want somebody to win it twice from Alex. Uh, that's how I think from now on, you know. So, so yeah, and you know, we we still gonna meet obviously because football has made us meet a lot of times. I know, uh, and yeah, uh, we are still gonna talk about this game. And I'll, I will definitely be in and around football, you know. And uh, thank you for everything, and thanks for having me. Uh, Appreciate you, my brother. Thank you for talking to us and happy retirement. It's over from us here. Thank you so much, Lebo Hamanyama, for telling his story and by extension telling the story of a dreamer, a South African dream from Alex to the world. Pela, pela, and so on.